So how many people have played an escape room game before? That's quite a few. So in the game, you need to find clues under rugs, behind cabinets, and every nook and cranny that the game designers could think of. Once you find all these clues, you need to combine them in order to escape. And now imagine all the clues are placed on a single table in front of you in the exact sequence you need to use them. You'd probably escape a lot faster. The hard and time consuming part is the search. On my team at Netflix, we faced this exact problem. How do we quickly search across data spread across multiple data sources? So I will walk you through how we use GraphQL to build our search index and how we, and how we keep this index up to date. I will then show how this fits into our data flow and share some of the learnings from using GraphQL for search over the past half year. But first, let's talk a bit about what my team does. So I work on the marketing technology team at Netflix, and our goal is to promote Netflix content across the globe. We have thousands of shows on the service. We operate in over 190 countries, and we support around 30 languages. For each of these shows, countries, and languages, we need to find the right creative which resonates with each viewer. My team builds the tools to produce and distribute these marketing creatives at scale. So we use GraphQL to pull together all of our data. And here's a sample. At the very core, we have the creative service, which keeps track of all the creatives that we build. We enhance each of these with information on the show it promotes. And we further enhance the show with how popular it is in every country. We also like allow our marketing team to comment on these creatives. Despite all this data coming from many sources, GraphQL makes it very easy to pull together all this data for a single creative. But we have quite a few. If we build only a few variations for each show, country, and language, we'd have over 50 million total creative variations. We need a proper search to be able to keep track of all this data. So how do we index our search database? Because we use GraphQL, we can simply iterate over all the creatives in our database, call GraphQL to get the necessary data for each of these, and put the results into Elasticsearch. So once our, all of our data has been indexed, we can do quite a bit with it. We can sort, group, and filter on arbitrary fields. We can provide, 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 provide suggestions to the user as they enter their query. Or we can show facets to quickly filter by. We can progressively load our data to provide Hey, like infinite scroll experience. And best of all, the data comes back significantly faster since everything has been cached. But we can't just index our data one time. We have to keep the index up to date like as things like change. So how do we do this? 
we already have Kafka eventing the data from our back end when something changes. So the first step is to listen to those like change events. We can hear change event for the creative, for the show, for the title like ranking, or for the, 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 the comments. But for now, we can focus on what happens if we hear a title ranking, like change event. We need to determine which creatives to re-index. So we, we already know that title of the ranking is for a show, and creatives promote shows. So we can write some code to make this work. And we can hard code all of these like rules as well. But we don't have to keep these rules up to date like as our schemas like change or as we build the new indices. Fortunately, we don't have to. Graph QL like already defines all of the relationships among our data. And we can use these relationships to keep our index up to date. So here's a graphical representation of our original query. So what do we do to build it? To build it, to build our, our like search index here once we hear like a change event for the title ranking. So the first thing we do is we do a fan out operation, basically asking GraphQL to provide us with all of the show IDs that are connected to this change title ranking. And once we have these like show IDs, we can search our our database of creatives to find all the ones that actually reference these values. The creatives we find are the, are the exact ones we need to re-index. And we can re-index them using the same pipeline we used to index them in the first place. So this approach actually works for much more complex data like as well. The original fan out like operation only needs to go up one level from the change vertex to its parent. We don't have to do a full graph search to find out well, find out what changed, because only that vertex and its immediate like, edges could have changed. The fan out operation, in combination with the search, <coughs> gives us enough information to be able to keep our index up to date. So how does this fit into our data flow? Before indexing our data, our browser application would call our GraphQL server directly. And the server would go through the time-consuming process of calling each one of the services. After indexing our data, our, our server only needs to call the services when something changes. And it caches the results into Elasticsearch. The browser can call our search database directly to get the like, exact rows it, it needs and get them much faster. We can actually abstract away the search database from the, from the browser completely by putting it behind GraphQL. Using this pattern, when the browser calls GraphQL, and, and it requests data that has already been indexed, we can provide it with robust search functionality. If data hasn't been indexed, it can fall back to calling the services directly. So this pattern, in combination with the fact that we can automatically keep our search index up to date, Basically, turn search into a plugin that you can enable on your GraphQL server with minimal configuration. So what kind of configuration do we have to do, and what did we learn from it? So the first thing we need to do is connect our search indexer to a GraphQL server. And that server needs to have bi-directional edges. This means if we build a resolver from the creative to the show, we also need to build one from the show to the creative. This bidirectionality 
allows our search indexer to find a path from the changed vertex to the document it needs to re-index. We also need to listen to change events. So we use Kafka. So we built a simple Kafka consumer for these. And finally, we need to connect it to some kind of search database. And we use Elasticsearch. So, so this whole process wasn't too complex. And it only took a couple of hours to hook everything up. But this is, of course, the after we built our search indexer, which took several weeks. But this is a piece of code that can be used by any number of teams, regardless of what kind of data they have. So after we set things up, how do you tell it to index something? So the first step is you need to define a GraphQL query. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> the query defines exactly which fields you want to index. And also gives you the ability to pull in data for those fields. The relationships in our graph give us enough information to be able to keep our index up to date. So basically, the code that we wrote at the beginning of this year was enough for us to keep our indices up to date, even as our schemas like changed or as we built like new indices. So how about performance? Well, let's take a look at each of the components. For the change events, we use Kafka. And this adds a couple milliseconds each time a change happens. For the fan out operation, we have to make a query against our GraphQL server. But this is, is pretty fast because we're only expanding out one vertex. And because our vertices are actually connected by foreign keys, making them really easy to, to traverse between. The search operation is actually really fast, too. Because we are searching by the vertex IDs, and Elasticsearch has already built an inverted index on these IDs. Finally, the operation to rebuild your document could take some time, depending on how complex your GraphQL query is. But this shouldn't be too much of a concern, because we're, because we're only ever rebuilding a small number of the, the documents like at a time. After using this in production for, for about half a year, we have seen indexing times of, of under half a second. If you want to learn more, I'm writing a post next week on the Netflix tech blog with significantly more technical details. So like in conclusion, after adopting GraphQL to build and maintain our search index, we have been able to provide our users with robust search functionality and faster page loads. We didn't have to do too much refactoring on the client side because the, 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 the data came back in the exact same shape. And best of all, this was all driven by configuration. We didn't have to, to write like, any custom code. Thank you. <laughs>